मजेत ना आओ तुम्हा सर्वांना गणेश चतुर्थीच्या हार्दिक शुभेच्छा बोला गणपती बाप्पा आय नो इट्स इंग्लिश चॅनल व्हिडिओ बट यु नो आय थॉट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग दिस व्हिडिओ इन मराठी जस्ट टू गेट दिस इन टू द एंटायर वाईब ऑफ दिस फेस्टिव्ह सीझन टुडे मार्क्स द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द टेन डे गणेश फेस्टिवल अँड आफ्टर दॅट वी आर गुड हॅव नवरात्री फेस्टिवल दशहरा दिवाळी अँड वॉट नॉट सो वॉट कुड बी अ बेटर टाईम दॅन दिस टू डिस्कस अ स्टॉक विच कॅन गेट रिअली बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम दिस फेस्टिव सीझन टुडे वी आर गुड टू डिस्कस अबाउट टायटन कंपनी लिमिटेड but before we go on to the fundamentals and understanding the products of titan limited i think the story of titan deserves a mention do you know who this person is he is mr jerkses desai he was a very experienced and ambitious employee of tatas he wanted to do something really big and path breaking for the company and that was the reason why he met mr minu modi well mr minu modi was the vice chairman of tata press and he gave mr jerkses a challenge he said turn around the loss making tata press make it public and then utilize the money raised from the public to find a new vertical for the tatas guess what within 2 years tata press became the most modern press in india it was during that time that mr mahadevan who was the joint secretary ministry of industrial development who had come to tata press for a printing and publishing job it was then when mr jerkses desai also had a word with mr mahadevan and he told him that he wanted to do something big for the tatas but was not really able to find the right area mr mahadevan then invited mr anil and mr jerkses to delhi and said that why don't you study the various sectors where in the ministry itself was encouraging the private sector adoption of course they happily agreed so on 21st march 1977 mr anil called mr jerkses from delhi and asked how about wrist watches jerkses had found what he wanted mr modi pitched this idea to mr jrd and he liked the idea of the watch project Within the next 2 years Mr Mahadevan invited Tata Press to become the joint venture partner for manufacturing watches but wait Mr Mahadevan in the meanwhile was transferred from Delhi to Tidco In 1982 the ministry gave approval to Tidco but the participation of Tata Group was not permitted as at that time manufacturing watches was reserved for the small scale private players and public sector enterprises like HMT only so to tackle this issue Tata's floated a new small scale investment company named Questar Investments and an agreement was signed between these two companies to form a jv titan watches limited in march 1987 titan launched its first set of watches with the path breaking print and television advertisements it was a major success in fact the signature tune of the campaign is used by the brand even today Inspired by the western model where watches and jewelry are sold together by renowned international brands Titan launched its own jewelry brand called Tanishq in 1995 Wasn't the story of Titan really interesting absolutely yes but was that the reason why Mr Rakesh Junjunwala thought of investing in Titan of course not he found out three major reasons for investing in titan number 1 was the demography of india he believed that because of the rising consumer market in india the overall organized jewelry segment and watches segment could make it big the second reason was that at that point in time titan was already an established watch maker but they were struggling with their jewelry business at that point in time they had a huge debt on the balance sheet but then he said that because titan had already 
proved themselves in the past with the watch segment he believed that they could again prove themselves in the jewelry segment as well the third and the most important thing is that he said he had that risk taking capacity and that he could wait and stay invested in the company till the company made it big but the big question was that what happened with the jewelry business did it really turn around or not to give the answer let me give you a clue just have a look at these two logos and i'm waiting for the next 5 seconds i hope you got the answer but just in case if you have not let me explain quickly the old logo you can very clearly see the dial and the belt of the watch but in the new logo you can see that it is clearly a diamond shaped logo these logos speak up very clearly that the focus of the company has clearly shifted from watches to jewelry making business but do the financials also speak up the same thing for that just have a look at this pie chart you can see that 88% of their business comes from jewelry segment and the balance from watches clocks eyewear and others i hope you have understood how logos can help you interpret a lot about the company i'll also give you a very interesting analogy of two more logos just have a look at them i'm sure you might be in this category and now you have to just smash the subscribe button and shift to this category if you have done that now let's move on to the products of the company now if you have a look at this chart you can very clearly see that in the jewelry category they are present across all the segments except mass market the reason might be that in the mass market the unorganized players have a predominant market share in the watches category they are present across the board and they also have various brands in the eye care fragrances and fashion accessories and the indian dresswear category moving ahead with the present industry analysis you can see through this chart that currently india's gems and jewelry exports has reached 39.14 billion us dollars and it is expected that this number would reach 70 billion us dollars by the end of 2024 and 25 well if i'm talking about the overall market size the jewelry and gems segment is of 78.5 us billion dollars as on 2021 and now let's move on with the financials of the company just have a look at the quarterly analysis data wherein if you see whether it is qoq growth or whether it is yoy growth the growth is definitely impressive moving ahead with the sales growth numbers if you see the ttm sales growth is 50% and even if you have a long term view 10 years cagr for sales is at 13% even if we go and check the profit growth 10 years profit cagr is at 14% and ttm it is at 132% if you have a look at the stock price cagr 1 year cagr is at 30% and 10 years stock price cagr is at 27% have a look at the return on equity as well it has been consistent and always has been above 20% moving ahead with a longer time frame data you can see that currently the sales ttm is at a lifetime high beat operating profit margin beat or actual operating profit or the profit before tax the company is breaking all the records and all these numbers are at an all time high but wait all these numbers are at this amazing level before the festive season now you can imagine after the festive season what could be the financials looking like if you have a look at the segment wise information as well you can see be it jewelry watches clocks eyewear or in the other segment category the yoy growth is definitely impressive having a look at the cash flow one point catches our attention that is a negative operating cash flow in the year march 2022 now when i try to look for the reasons you can see in the chart below that the inventory is the biggest negative number because of which the overall operating cash flow is coming to be negative now just understand this logic if the sales are decreasing and inventory is increasing that's a bad sign for the company but if sales are also increasing and if the inventory is still stacked up it means that company believes that acha sale ho hi raha hai in the coming few months there is a great chance that this stacked up inventory can also be sold and that is the reason why you see that big number in inventory number which gets translated into a negative operating cash flow so in simple words that is not a cause of concern moving ahead with some more ratios roce at 21.4% roe at 26.4% 
percent debt to equity super manageable at just 0.78 and if you have a look at the eps it is continuously increasing over the last few quarters but if you see the pe that there there has been a continuous drop in the same so basically this one shows that there is still some headroom left for the stock to go in the upward trajectory well, the financials definitely look good, but let me tell you why this is my top pick for this season. Well, there are two reasons for the same. The very first one is the number of stores. From 1996 to 2022, the company had opened 582 stores in total. But in this financial year, they are planning to open 50 new stores. Now think logically, more number of stores is equal to more revenue generated is equal to more profitability. There is another reason why I felt that this has to be the stock for this festive season and the reason lies in the stock trends that I have observed typically during August to December. For that let me present you the last 5 years data. From August to December 2017 the stock rose by 59%. In the year 2018 it rose by around 5%. In 2019 by 13%. In 2020 by 50%. And in 2021, by 46%. So all in all, to wrap up the entire discussion, let us see whether the key points are ticked off or not. Business, strong business, tick. Fundamentals, definitely tick mark. Price movements, the point that I told you, August to December, surely a tick mark. And because of all these reasons, I have added this stock in my portfolio and I'm going to keep a close watch from the months of August to December 2022. But in case your money is stuck in stocks like Paytm and LIC, don't forget to click here. Till then, take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye.